with the I welcome you heartily. Okay, come forward, I guess. There's enough seats. Please come forward. So you'll be able to hear better. In this translation of the Bengali song Akash Bhara Shujatara, Rabindranath Tagore affirms his awareness of the universe and his place within it. In awe and wonder, he senses within himself and in the world around him the presence of the life spirit of the universe. All of Tagore's writings express this extraordinary vision of the connectedness of things the fundamental principle of unity that underlies the diversity and plenitude of creation. Tagore's mysticism is evoked by a profound sense of the soul's desire for union with the eternal. But this abstract faith does not preclude an active involvement with the concrete and the particular. For Tagore's vision is built upon a paradox. He locates the transcendent in the ephemeral and the universal in the particular. In the humblest of places, he detects greatness and spiritual glory. His philosophy does not take him away from a strong engagement with social realities, nor does his mystical vision direct his gaze away from the world of human strife. This is the paradox I wish to explore in this presentation to highlight the contradictions and inner conflicts that underlie and enrich to like fresh flowers in my heart every day. When the patter of rain at night brought dreams from the fairyland and mother's voice in the evening gave meaning to the stars. This sense of wonder, evoked by the simplest experiences of every day, remained with Tagore to his dying day. It went into the making of his mysticism. Throughout his life, Tagore's ideas and attitudes continued to evolve, but some features remained constant. Critics detect a gradual shift of focus from God to man in his writings on religion and point out the conflicting pulls of detachment of universal love that stirred the imagination of the Western world when he won the Nobel Prize in 1913. To a world on the brink of war, the English Gitanjali brought a message of peace and spiritual solace. It is conventional to read Gitanjali as a profound philosophical text about the soul's quest for union with the eternal. But this spiritual journey does not entail a dismissal of the material, social, and physical dimensions of existence. In fact, the poems of Gitanjali vibrate with a dynamic awareness of the unity of all things. And I'm quoting from one of the poems. The same stream of life that runs through my veins night and day runs through the world and dances in rhythmic measures. It is the same life that shoots in joy through the dust of the earth in numberless blades of grass and breaks into tumultuous waves of leaves and flowers. This explains the poet's special bond with his God. The Supreme expresses itself in the most ordinary facets of every, everyday life, hence nothing is negligible or worthy of contempt. What binds everything together is the principle of love. In 1925, speaking of the mystics of medieval India, Tagore declared, and I quote, the infinite cannot be comprehended through mere knowledge. The God of the Maramyas is a very different God. He is the Lord of the heart. The germ of this idea is already present in the Gitanjali poems, which express the reciprocal love of God and man through a range of metaphors. Erotic desire, mother love, brotherly camaraderie, and the poet's love for nature. In several poems, for instance, Tagore adopts a feminized voice to address God, using an erotic metaphor. For instance, in one of the poems, he says, my song has put off her adornments. She has no pride of dress and decoration. Ornaments would mar our union. They would come between thee and me. Their jingling would drown thy whispers. All these metaphors signify the ultimate form of love, 
God's love for all of creation, and the soul's yearning for union with the divine. In Tagore's scheme of things, therefore, the world rediscovered through the vision of the mystic is not an illusion. Gitanjali is at one level a celebration of the beauty of creation, the seasons, earth and sky, the flora and fauna of the land. At the center of this universe is man, beloved of God. The poems of Gitanjali also affirm the mutuality of the love that binds man to God. What hampers this love is the ego and the desire for material assets like wealth and power. In one of the poems, he says, the child who is decked with prince's robes and who has jeweled chains round his neck loses all pleasure in his play. Mother, it is no gain thy bondage of finery if it keep one shut off from the healthful dust of the earth, if it rob one of the right of entrance to the great fair of common human life. Here the poet aligns himself with the stream of common humanity, rejecting the culture of avarice. In another poem, the one who tries to enslave the world finds himself enchained by his own craving for authority. And I quote some parts of it. Prisoner, tell me, who was it that wrought this unbreakable chain? It was I, said the prisoner, who forged this chain very carefully. I thought my invincible power would hold the world captive, leaving me in a freedom undisturbed. Thus night and day I worked at the chain with huge fires and cruel hard strokes. When at last the work was done and the links were complete and unbreakable, I found that it held me in its grip. Tagore's mysticism thus rejects some forms of desire while legitimizing others. The principle of love, which finds its supreme form in the relationship between man and God, expresses itself in manifold ways that are inclusive rather than exclusive. The senses have a role in it, as much as the spirit and the intellect. And I quote, deliverance is not for me in renunciation. I feel the embrace of freedom in a thousand bonds of delight. No, I will never shut the doors of my senses. The delights of sight and hearing and touch will bear thy delight. Within the concrete, the poet detects the presence of the abstract. I dive down into the depth of the ocean of forms, hoping to gain the perfect pearl of the formless. The soul's quest for the eternal involves the need to rise above the limits of the individual self. This process of overcoming the ego can demand a violent internal struggle and a willingness to confront the starkness of suffering. It presents the possibility of crossing the barriers that separate the privileged from those at the margins of society. And I quote, Here is thy footstool, and there rest thy feet, where live the poorest, the lowliest, and lost. Pride can never approach to where thou walkest in the clothes of the humble, among the poorest, the lowliest, and the lost. Rabindranath's God does not reside in temples, nor is his worship realized through hollow rituals. He is to be found among the humblest forms of existence. In this emphasis on a secular, tolerant approach, Tagore may be compared to Kabir, whose poems he had translated Poem 11 of Gitanjali asserts Tagore's dislike of orthodox religion, his respect for the common man, and his faith in the dignity of labor. And I quote, Leave this chanting and singing and telling of beads. Whom dost thou worship in this lonely dark corner of a temple with doors all shut? Open thine eyes and see thy God is not before thee. He is there where the tiller is tilling the hard ground and where the path maker is breaking stones. Come out of thy meditations and leave aside thy flowers and incense. Meet him and stand by him in toil and in sweat of thy brow. Rising above the selfish ego brings one closer to one's social others, an important step in the moral and spiritual journey. For in crossing the boundaries that divide man from man, the human spirit develops a sense of oneness with the universe and its makeup. In the essay, The World is Founded on Love, Tagore asserts, it is through the coming together of our minds and hearts 
the truth is manifest. And in Gitanjali he says, Thou hast made me known to friends whom I knew not. Thou hast given me seats in homes not my own. Thou hast brought the distant near and made a brother of the stranger. When one knows thee, then alien there is none. Then no door is shut. O oh, grant me my prayer that I may never lose the bliss of the touch of the one in the play of the many. Such is the essence of Tagore's mysticism. Through our connection with the world, we find our link with the, with the divine. Today, we need to familiarize ourselves again with Tagore's vision for reasons that have as much to do with our contemporary world as with the genius of Tagore himself. Taken together, his writings continue to resonate with some of the most pressing concerns that haunt us today. They remind us, for instance, of the need to connect with the social and cultural others and to think beyond the barriers that separate people from people. They also emphasize the importance of living in harmony with our environment, a lesson our threatened planet would do well to heed today. His works assert the significance of ethical and spiritual values instead of preoccupation with power and prosperity. They reject traditional religious practices to embrace a form of faith that is inclusive and based on tolerance. In an age that increasingly values narrow specialization, we should perhaps pause to consider the sheer breadth of vision inherent in Tagore's writings, for they demonstrate the underlying unity of all forms of knowledge in their combination of science, art, religion, philosophy, education, literature, politics, <coughs> economics, history, and music. Tagore's vision of a world connected by the principles of love and truth did not materialize in his lifetime. In his dying days, in crisis in civilization, he would lament the state of a world torn asunder by violence and aggression. The unfinished journey is a constant metaphor in Gitanjali. The time that my journey takes is long, and the way of it, long. The traveler has to knock at every alien door to come to his own, and one has to wander through all the outer worlds to reach the innermost shrine at the end. Rereading Tagore in the 21st century brings home to us the fact that the journey to a better world still continues in our day, for the transformation envisioned by Tagore still remains beyond our reach. Thank you. Radhaji for that wonderful insight. If there are any questions, uh, Radhaji would be happy to take them. I introduce you to Ms. Somali Bhanda. She's a musician, a vocalist in the sphere of Hindustani classical music. She's a Sangeet Vishadit from the Patkhande School of Music. Influenced by Tagore's music at an early age, she is currently working on Tagore's mysticism, music, urban folk, world music backgrounds like flamenco, fado, Turkish music, desert music, and even jazz. She is releasing an album by this year end. She has composed music for a number of theatrical productions and documentary films, performed at numerous prestigious musical festivals around India. Currently, she is working on migrating music and Tagore's Unbound. Uh, she's done performances and lectures, dem lecture demonstrations, and also written about Tagore. She's authored a number of articles published in anthologies and journals of great standing. She writes music, writes poetry, and also plays the violin. Uh, and uh, she also works for the West Bengal government, by the way. So may I invite Samali Panda? She's been accompanied on violin by Mr. Ram Gopal Pine.
Good evening. Namaskar. Actually, I'm very much honored that uh, I'm before you today. And uh, I, of course, I'm thankful to